Adobe just unveiled the killer Photoshop feature that we've all been dreaming of. Generative AI inside Photoshop. Brace yourself because once you've experienced this, there is no turning back. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And it's been a long while that I've truly felt excited for how Adobe is innovating. Adobe adding Firefly's generative AI directly into Photoshop is huge. So currently it's only in the beta of Photoshop. So make sure you go into your creative cloud and check your updates and then go to beta apps and then just click update. I've already done it. So let's jump into Photoshop beta. So it's actually very straightforward to use. Just grab the, grab the lasso tool and then just select the portion of the frame that you want. A pop-up window comes up, click on it, and you can just click generate. But in this case, let's just put in Apple, like he's holding an Apple. Click generate, it processes it, and then it gives us an Apple. And it may not be perfect, but already this is a great jumping point to be able to see the potential that this has. And it's only in beta. So let's say we wanted to add in camera. Like we wanted him to be holding a different camera, not and Apple or the iPhone that he was holding before. And it just allows you to iterate on photos that are nearly perfect. And this is only gonna get better as the technology gets better. You can also just cycle through different versions of it. You have to be very specific on what you want. There is some items that will not come up. So this is one of the examples that I actually did see where you select a portion of the image and let's give her a plaid shirt. I want to make sure that we kind of give the system enough. So let's give her a plaid shirt. And then it does its magic in the background. For me, like that is a great start. All right, let's give her a white shirt. Like again, just having a tool that allows you to iterate very, very quickly on the images that you have and to adjust it in full resolution, no uploading to websites, no having third party photos you need to then send off and send back and it just being in a in the tool that I use every single day. Like I'm I'm super excited about it. I love all the AI tools and how they're helping me achieve the vision and the goals that I'm trying to do as quickly as possible. And having it as a separate layer is just well done Adobe. Well done. Congratulations. Fantastic. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So in this image, let's say you're doing some home deco stuff and like, hey, I wanna add a dog instead of having to, let's just go blue dog. Let's add a blue dog to that couch. Let's see what Adobe Firefly gives us. Generative AI add, it's like, come on, uh, come on. It even got the blanket and like, okay, that dog is cute, but let's try another, oh, come on. Like the lighting is coming from the right direction. It just, it's so good. Like to be able to do this, to find a picture of a dog and put it onto that couch that fits in perspective and it looks like it's actually on the couch, that is a day's worth of work for even some of the best people out there. But like, that's just fantastic. Okay, let's try something else. Let's see what happens. And this is multi-tonal. We got, we got the sun coming in. Let's just do a rattlesnake in the living room why not let's see how we would be able to iterate on this and just have fun with it now all these tools are going to get better and better like the shadows are correct the like that is like i'm just throwing things out there and this is at the full resolution of the image Again, it's being able to take your photos, fix it in camera, you get it perfect, but then you can then finesse it in post. Like this is everything that I've been talking about where it's not necessarily going to take your job. It's just gonna allow you to do your job quicker and allow you to get through more iterations as quickly as possible. So like the blue dog, come on. So here's another example. Say we wanna add in paintings right here because you know, why not? Two, let's do three. Paintings, not even specific. Like I'm just trying to show you what iterations and how quickly you can iterate through this kind of stuff. This is why this is why I'm so excited. That's it's not really three paintings, but hey, still looks pretty cool. So if you want, to, let's say, add in painting, paintings, like it recreates the background, it recreates the shadows, it does all that extra work on top of it. So three paintings. 
and it gives you multiple options on, on something. And something else that I found myself using with this tool is selecting a portion of the image. And instead of using the remove tool, I just use generative AI to click and then type in remove. I actually found that this works a little bit more, that this works a little bit faster than remove for some reason. So not only did it remove it, fix the carpet, add in a leg or add in a blanket that a throw on the couch. Like if you looked at this image before without it and with it, you wouldn't really know that something was missing. So let's add in a virtual moose head. So moose head, like a trophy. Instead of actually having to get a real one, we can just simulate it. Let's see what AI provides for us. Come on, man. The shadows are all right. This is just going to be nearly flawless. Like I'm excited for how quickly I'll be able to do this kind of stuff. I'll be able to generate this image just from seeing it in my head. Like that's where the creativeness is going to come from. This is one of those uh, best case scenarios. Say you have an image that works really well for what you're trying to do, but there's something missing in it. Like say you wanted to add in the family pet. So let's say you wanted to add in a dog right here. Just type in dog. This is what makes this so powerful. And then we have a family dog and you can just cycle through the different variations instead of looking for hours and hours and hours uh, through other stock sites and trying to find the perfect dog in the perfect angle, this is just going to get better and better and better. And that, that's why I'm excited. Like not only that, look at her shirt right here and look how it actually cleaned up that portion, added in the shadow so it can bring that dog in nice and close. And say we wanted to add in a dog drawing right there. You can just, you can just generate that instead of having to draw your own weird doggy. And the beautiful thing is it's non-destructive, meaning that I can just reprompt it to do something and just having it add in the dog with the family. I will be completely honest. It isn't perfect. Like, let's say we wanted to add in a couch over here. So let's add in a couch, not even a specific couch, just a couch. I know I'll get the lighting right, but I feel that there are some angles and aspects that it just, it can't figure out just yet. This is okay, but it still looks funky. Let's put over here a tall plant and just fill this room out. And then over here, we'll add in a hanging lamp, like how we got the shadows and the sun coming on. We got the lamp. Okay, let's add in a TV, large, flat screen TV. And we start looking at the details. That's where it's going to start falling apart, but that's where the, the artistry is going to come in and you can go and then fix that. So let's say, Hey, let's add in a painting up here. Now be honest, if you were working in Photoshop and you're wanting to do this kind of stuff, how long would it take you to get this kind of detail? Cause going in and fixing up the feet, that's a lot easier than trying to find the right couch or even building in the 3d or doing any of that kind of stuff. And it's just coming down to prompts and, and finding that base image and then just prompting it until you find something that is working for you. Coffee table. And you can say round coffee table. You can do so many different things. It's all comes down to the prompt and how you actually imagine it and how you picture it. And it looks like it got the reflection of the TV of like this. This is like the understanding part that is just is blowing my mind. Okay, let's add in a... Let's go underneath. Okay. It's a nice fat rug. And then uh, let's go on top of that and go and do coffee table on top of it. I could have just masked out the other one, but let's see how the generative AI fixes its own problem. Based understanding what's coming underneath it. And it puts it all under there and adds a new shadow. Like this is all additive. It understood what's underneath it. Like this is really well thought out. This is really well done in terms of generative AI. The iteration just happens very, very quickly. And if I want to do something a little bit more detailed, I can just add that. I can add in, say, you know, right there, right there, and then right there, and just go pot lights. More imaginative you can be, the better in your descriptions, 
you can just start adding in so many different things. So again, just let's let's remember where we started to where we are at this point. And there are some terms that it will straight up just not create. So definitely it says be respectful and safe. And there's a whole list of things that it won't let you add in. So if that just comes up, rephrase what you're trying to do and find something that works. And one area that I think generative AI is gonna be fantastic is when you're trying to extend an image. So you can crop and make the image larger and to create some blank space, then just use your marquee tool. You select that portion and you just click generate and it will fill in what it assumes based on the rest of the image, what needs to be there. It's definitely not perfect, but it definitely gives us an idea of how this technology is gonna get better and better over time. So if you do need to fill out a space, like say you have a vertical a portrait photo and you need to extend it out, this is a great way to be able to do that. So where I see this being very useful is when you have a really good image that you wanna start with, and you like the feeling of it. So you have the mood, you have the color scheme, you have the thing that you want, that's where this is going to shine the best. You captured the image, you've captured the mood, and so whatever you write, whatever prompt, you can actually go in and readjust your prompt and then click generate. And all your variations are presented right here. And it's non-destructive. So it doesn't delete the variations that you've done before. And you just go through and find the ones you like. Then you use this tool to elevate it to something that works for you. And you're creating your own images from the feeling that you're trying to go for. And I love that it is in Photoshop right now. Like the future is now only faster. Like this is fantastic. I'm super thumbs up for how this is now. It's not only talk. It's not on a website. It's not some kind of, oh, that'll be cool when it comes. It has come. The future is now. And I'm super excited. It is a strange feeling to have Photoshop being fun and exciting again. AI is taking over. Make sure that you're adapting your workflow to include it. Like in this video where I talk about the five AI tools that I use for video editing. Also, I live stream on my second channel where I deep dive on the creative process as well as freelance financials. So make sure you check that out. As always, thanks for watching. Well done, Adobe.